So how much more proof do you need that Gateway Church is an absolute cult? It started at the top with Robert Morris, with what he did to Cindy Clemesher when she was just 12. From there, Robert Morris went on to form Gateway Church. He's now worth $117 million. He started this ministry. It just expanded all over the place across Texas. And really, I mean, people that watch Gateway around the world. But it was all built on a lie. Something horrible that this man did to this young woman, which he still to this day has not faced accountability for whatsoever. Has never given a dime to Cindy. Never faced any sort of, you know, criminal justice for what he did. And he's just enjoying life now, right? He's just basking in the millions that he's made off the sheep, you know, off the, the sheep that were deceived by him over the years. And how many times have we seen Gateway Elder Trey Wilbanks ever since the Robert Morris resignation? You had Wilbanks have to take to that stage multiple times, addressing not just Robert Morris's resignation and everything with Cindy, but also more lawsuits against the church, more firings at the church of other disgusting pastors. And now in the latest, the results of the Haynes and Boone investigation. I got more to say on this now. If some of you missed my initial video on this, you can go back on the channel and check it out. But we have a little bit more information for you um, in this update today. Because Gateway is still trying to keep the wheels turning on a church that hit the iceberg, let's just be honest, a long time ago. And it's going down. Ask yourself the question, is this, would this be a church that you would want to be a part of. Anytime any gateway elder or leader says, trust me on this, you do the opposite. You don't trust them because that trust was violated a long time ago. And what about now this criminal probe? Because this was very interesting when this was addressed by Will Banks during Gateway's weekend services that took place on November 2nd and November 3rd. Uh, who does the criminal probe involve? We got a lot more, you know, questions and answers here. We'll talk about it in just a second. Before we do, I want to welcome all of you to Not By Sight News. Yes, a blind Christian guy here reporting to you, reminding you as always that we walk by faith, not by sight. For someone like me, that's kind of my only option. If you guys could, do me a big favor. Hit the like button for me. Share this video around. When you do that, you help get these videos out there more in the algorithm and the recommended section gets more eyes on our content that way. And I need to request another huge favor from you. In light of my wife's recent health struggles, would you consider making a generous donation by supporting and funding Not By Sight News? We need you now more than ever before if we're going to be able to continue to run our operation here. Now, my wife several months ago suffered a stroke, also a clotting disorder that leaves her on blood thinners for the rest of her life. And even more recently than that, a lupus diagnosis that has left her in just extreme debilitating pain and has caused her to no longer be able to work. She had a very good job, had a good salary. Um, and now just because of all these issues, she can't do it any longer. And let me say this too, because I get people in the comment section all the time and say, oh, uh, she took the... Uh, you know, uh, she took the shot. That's why. No, she didn't. It's amazing to me that people think that these sorts of issues uh, never existed prior to the events of 2020 and 2021. Uh, that people never had strokes. They never had other things. It's just ridiculous um, that they make these claims. Oh, we! I know that she took it. You don't know anything. They say the same thing about me. me. Neither one of us did. Neither one of us took it. Okay? Never will. So I just, I had to put that out there because I just get these people that just, it's hysterical to me, like they know us personally or something. But I'll tell you this, you know, when I mentioned it's not going to be sustainable for me to be able to continue doing Not By Sight News, it's because, look, I cannot rely on 
ad revenue alone to be able to, to support myself and my wife with all these bills that we have coming in, medical bills and other bills. You know, it, channel viewership is also going way down here as well. Even if these videos manage to get to like a thousand views, you get like two bucks from that. That's why I say it's not going to be sustainable. We need your help, guys. Here's how you can help us out. If the Lord puts it on your heart to make a generous donation, you have multiple ways. One is by visiting our GoFundMe. You can find the GoFundMe link in the description of this video and all videos. And we appreciate all of you who are contributing that way. You really are helping us keep the lights on here. Another way is by becoming a monthly contributor on our Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. That link also in the description. And finally, by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video here. I will, I will tell you if you choose that option, YT does take 30% of that donation for themselves. So if you wanna make sure that we get the majority of your generous gift, then GoFundMe or Patreon will be your best options. And I'll, I'll say this too, just to kind of, you know, put a bow on this. Now, for those that say, oh, you're, you know, you're begging, you're, you're doing this and that, no, well, it's called asking for help. And, you know, for those that believe in the work of this ministry, if you, you know, truly believe that it's important to expose the church corruption, the wolves in the pulpit, and protect the vulnerable, that's why we're asking you to help. Uh, and again, for those that want to continue to say, oh, you're just, you know, begging this and that, look, consider yourself blessed then, then you're in a better spot than we are right now. If you're not in a position where, you know, you got to ask for a little help, then consider yourself blessed. Um, instead of putting others down um, and, you know, throwing things at them because you don't like the way that we handle certain things or, you know, if, if you're not going to donate anyway, then why do you even care? So uh, I just had to say that. But again, we do thank all of you who are contributing to help us out right now in our time of need. You really are, again, keeping Not By Sight News going. We love you all for it. So let's get into this. Uh, again, Trey Wilbanks announcing the results of the Haynes and Boone investigation during Gateway Services November 2nd and November 3rd. Here's what we know. And then I want to talk about this criminal probe because I have some thoughts on this. He talked about how, now remember this originally, they said in their original statement, the Gateway elders and leaders had no idea about Cindy's age, right? That she was only 12, right? It was just all about, you know, oh, well, Robert said that, you know, it was, you know, he, it was an affair and, you know, he was unfaithful in marriage. You know, it was a young woman, but, you know, that no one ever knew that, Cindy was really 12. And then what happened? Cindy had, you know, sent those emails to then Gateway Executive Pastor Tom Lane back from 2005 to 2007. Cindy said on multiple occasions that Tom Lane did know exactly how old she was. And then, of course, Lane tried to deny it. We know that at one point as well, you know, Robert Morris tried to get Cindy Clemish here to sign an NDA. Cindy had asked for about $50,000 to help pay for all of her therapy and counseling sessions over the years that she's had to endure. And then what happened? Robert Morris and his attorney said, tell you what, we'll give you $25,000. We'll give you half of that, but we'll also make you sign an NDA. Keep it tight lip. Don't tell anybody about it. You'll never be able to speak about this again. And good on Cindy because she didn't go for it. She was not going to be silenced. And for everybody that criticized her over the years saying, oh, she should have said something sooner. She tried. This is what, this was all in her story. She tried multiple times to tell people about what happened to her and nobody would listen. Guess what? People are listening now, aren't they? That one story that she gave to the Warburg Watch, look what it did. It didn't just get Robert Morris gone from Gateway. It's now led to numerous lawsuits against the church and various leaders for various things. It's led to more pastors getting fired. And now the results of this Haynes and Boone investigation, which I found interesting here, because now I could be wrong on this, and I will, if I'm wrong, then I am wrong. But I did not see anywhere that this investigation, that the results were made public. Again, I could have missed it somewhere, okay? Not just because I'm blind, but I could have missed it. But again, I did not hear Wilbanks mention, you know, that if you want to check out the full report, you can go view it here, view it where. I didn't, I did not see that anywhere. Now, I was pretty sure that from the beginning of this, when it was announced in June, that the results would be made public. So unless something changed, or again, I missed something, I did not see that anywhere. Wilbanks talked about how the results of the investigation concluded several weeks back. When I say several weeks back, that would have put it somewhere, I would assume, early to mid-October. Again, you got Wilbanks announcing this right at the beginning of November. And that the results were shared with a subcommittee group 
of gateway leaders that found two groups that knew, that either knew about credible allegations involving Morris and the mistreatment of Cindy Clemeshire, or they not only knew about the allegations, but they also knew that she was 12 and they chose not to say anything about it. They kept their mouth shut to protect, according to Will Banks, protect Morris at all costs. Funny that you use the word cost because it's always about the money with Gateway, isn't it? Now, Will Banks, at no point during his little speech here, did he mention the names of the elders or the staff that had been fired from Gateway. He should have. Now, because you see, if you go to the Gateway website, now they only list three elders. Will Banks is one of them, okay? But noticeably, if you go to the elders page of the Gateway site, you'll see that people like Kevin Grove, who was also an executive pastor, all these pastor titles, just it just gets me. Uh, Kevin Grove, he's gone. He's been the subject of quite a bit of controversy, especially as it comes to the financial side of things. I've talked about that before. You also had the likes of Thomas Miller, another gateway elder. He's been removed from the page and more names as well. But again, Will Banks did not mention any of them during the service or the staff members. All he said was that this would not be tolerated. And, you know, gateways and it cleans up. You know, you listen to him speak and it's like, oh, he's, you know, we can trust him now, right? Oh, we're, we're taking care of this. We're getting all these people out of there. The fact that they're only left with three elders. These are apparently the only three elders that did not know either of allegations of mistreatment from Robert Morris or Cindy's age. That's it. That That's stunning to me. I mean, we knew that Robert Morris, you know, had his little entourage of his elders that protected him, but my gosh. All but three? That's insane. Again, Will Banks said, oh, they're gone. They're removed. You know, we're, you know, we're not tolerating that. It get, you tolerated a lot. Now, here was something else I found interesting was that when, when Will Banks addressed the, the latest, one of the, there's so many lawsuits, you can't even keep track of them all, to be honest. But when he addressed this latest one, and I've covered it involving a group of former Gateway members that are calling for financial accountability as it comes to the Global Missions Fund and how Gateway had promised that, you know, 15% of all of your tithes would go to Global Missions. And these former church members have said now that like only 3% of that actually went to the, to the missions. So they're trying to find out where'd the money go. You had a former whistleblower who worked as a CPA for Gateway between 2011 and 2014, come out and say that, in fact, there's some truth to this here uh, because, you know, there was a lot of, of moves that were being made. And Kevin Grove, who I mentioned is apparently no longer with Gateway, was not allowing the CPA to get access to certain forms to verify and audit and everything else like that. And this money was just gone. There were unauthorized deposits being made and withdrawals being made from the global missions account. But yet Trey will, this is funny because this is the one thing that Will Banks is being defiant on. He is insisting, he is, I mean, coming out right and saying that, you know, anything about our finances, the global missions, just internet rumors, speculation, none of it's true. All of our finances are a hundred percent legit, which tells me that they are not. They're, they're, they're like, they're all like gung ho on the mistreatment thing, right? And oh, we love Cindy now, right? They love Cindy Clemeshire and they're encouraging anybody else. If you've been mistreated in the gateway church, you know, you know, please let us know. But when it comes to the money, they're putting their foot down and say, no, this is a bunch of hogwash. You know what? No, our, we have, we have the receipts, right? We have the audits. And, and again, the whistleblower is claiming otherwise you know, reviews and audits. And, and, and a lot of these things don't actually go in there and check for errors. Financial reviews is what the CPA has stated that Gateway has really done. But still, I mean, none of this has been shown. So they're protecting the money. Because again, I mean, what else do they have at this point? Right? Morris is gone. They're doing everything they can to make sure that, oh gosh, we better stay secure. I mean, look, none of this is true. None of this is true. Yeah, I don't know about that. But he's doubling down on it. What else did Wilbank say? He talked about the apostolic elders office is now being eliminated from Gateway Church. Well, that's a good thing because that's a joke of an office anyway. That'll be gone. 
they're also going to be making some changes to the church's bylaws. Okay, I don't never like bylaws to begin with. What those are going to be, we'll have to wait and see. But he also talked about more lawsuits that Gateway is facing. Now, I covered this a little bit in the previous video. Uh, but another one here that I want to mention, it's just this one just got me. And this is why I always say, your littles are not, they are not safe in these churches. I don't care if they're in the Sunday school, the nursery, or they're in the youth programs. Because there was, and this is what Will Bang said, there was one particular little who was also disabled, who back in 2016 was mistreated by one of these gateway staff members and yet trey wilbanks will stand up there and say oh we're going to make gateway better you know you can still trust us no see here's the thing with all of it and i'm going to get to the criminal probe with all of this that has come out what this should show you is that gateway needs to be shut down you cannot save something that was built upon lies and a creep like Morris, who again made himself a multi-millionaire off all the people for what he did. Cindy was silenced for a long time, right? He manipulated her. Even his own wife, if you remember, was blaming Cindy for what happened. And you're telling me that this, this organization, this thing needs to still exist? What good is it doing? It's another but cause pain, trauma, and more, and more. And now the criminal pro part of this, because this was not previously made known, but Trey Wilbank said that Gateway Church is cooperating in a criminal probe, a criminal investigation. Now, what was interesting about this was that he said that the criminal probe does not include Gateway Church or any of its current leaders. Oh, wait, there it is right there. Any of its current leaders has nothing to do with the church itself or current leaders, but they're participating in a criminal probe that obviously involves them to some degree. So if it's not the church... If it's not the current leaders, then who could it be? Maybe one Robert Morris? Because another thing that Wilbanks said here was that Robert Morris has been making some financial demands from Gateway Church and its elders. And Wilbanks said they're not going to meet those demands. See, things are going to get a little dicey now, aren't they? Right? Morris, Morris wants some more money. He's probably already lawyered up and he's getting ready for whatever it is that's going to be coming down against him here. But a criminal probe. Not with the current leaders. Oh, but they didn't say nothing about the former leaders, did they? Will Banks said nothing about former leaders. Just current leaders and Gateway Church. What more trouble could Robert Morris possibly be in here? Now, I want to point this out because there were some people that asked me this in the previous video that I did. You know, why hasn't Robert Morris been arrested? Look, the Haynes and Boone investigation, this was not some sort of, this is a law firm, okay? This was not, you know, this was not the FBI coming in here and looking into Robert Morris, okay? This is a, again, a big, powerful law firm. Again, they specialize in mitigating financial and reputational loss for major corporations and organizations like Gateway Church, which is, again, no, make no mistake about it. It's a business, ladies and gentlemen, it's a business. So Haynes and Boone was not going to be making any arrests. And also remember that Robert Morris was one of six individuals that refused to participate in this investigation. They didn't take phone calls. They didn't respond to, you know, uh, any written questions or emails, nothing. He wanted nothing to do with it whatsoever. Talk about not wanting to be transparent or accountable. Still has a face accountability. But what will this, because I think that this criminal probe, whatever it is, I think it's huge. I think it's going to blow the lid off this guy even more than it already is. Why else would even Trey Wilbanks mention it in the first place? If it's got nothing to do with Gateway and nothing to do with current leaders, then it, again, it only leaves to me 
one individual, that being Morris. So again, when you're talking a criminal investigation for those people that have been saying, when are charges going to be brought against Morris? It may be on the way. Because again, <laughs> it's a criminal probe. Not that, you know, not the other lawsuits, you know, Gateway, again, Gateway's got stacks and stacks of lawsuits against them right now from the financial side to, you know, uh, former members and youth being mistreated by other, if you know what I mean. So they got all that. So see, they're all involved here together, right? It's, the whole thing is coming down. Now, there's one other note here that I want to end with because this was something else that was brought up and there was some confusion. You know, we talked about this group of elders and staff that were let go of Gateway, right? However, questions were surrounding Gateway's spokesperson, Lawrence Swicegood. He'd been there for a long time. And, you know, every time that we would hear about a new pastor being fired or another lawsuit coming out, Swicegood would always have to respond. Again, he's the spokesperson. But interestingly enough, if you go to the Gateway website, Lawrence Swicegood is no longer there. So, attempts were made to contact Swicegood by email. This was on Sunday evening, November 3rd. An automatic reply was received on behalf of Swicegood that stated that Swicegood was transitioning out of his role and is no longer a part of Gateway Church. Interesting. But then just hours later, Swicegood actually replied to the email himself from his iPhone. Now, this was at the Roy's report, because the Roy's report is the one that reached out to Swicegood. So first, they get the automatic response. He's no longer with Gateway. He's transitioned out. But then Swicegood responded from his iPhone. Okay, this is on Sunday night, November 3rd. And Swicegood said, I am still a staff member of Gateway. Well, obviously, there's some confusion here because usually you know if you've been in any company where you know you got an email account obviously and if you're let go for whatever reason or you quit usually the company will you know set up an automatic reply that way if you have clients you've been working with or whatever and they'll put in some automatic reply saying that you're no longer with the company and here you know please contact this person you know you know for help so gateway obviously set up this response, this again, this automatic response for Swicegood, but then he replies and he says, no, I'm still a staff member. So the Roy's report reached out to Gateway on Monday, November 4th, and they inquired, what's the deal with Swicegood? There's conflicting reports here. Is he still with Gateway or is he not? Gateway responded to the email from the Roy's report, and they said that Lawrence Swicegood is gone. So I don't know how... Lawrence thought he was still a part of the church or still a part of the staff, but he, you know, Gateway made it clear he ain't with us anymore. So he's gone. Now, why is he gone? Is it because he too knew about Cindy's age and she was only 12? Or is it for another reason? You know, these spin doctors are a dime a dozen. I mean, Gateway will get another one. Hey, maybe they could bring in Eric Valls. You guys remember Eric Valls, the spokesperson for the whole IHOP KC situation? Yeah, he was a real winner, right? Maybe they didn't like the way that Swicegood was handling things. Maybe they need to get somebody in there that can do a little bit of a better spin job. But that remains to be seen. The bottom line is this. This whole thing is a giant mess. And anybody that is still currently supporting this church, I mean, honestly, I feel sorry for you. I do. Because God has allowed so much of this corruption to come out to wake you up to try to get you to realize this was not what he intended for his church. This was not what his church was ever supposed to be. It wasn't about planting mega church after mega church all over the country. No, they're businesses, but there's, but still you're going to have people that are going to support this place. And they always will. It won't matter what, it won't even matter if Robert Morris gets arrested, it won't matter. They'll call him innocent. They'll say it was all, it's just a persecution against the man of God, right? And they'll keep coming to Gateway. It's sad, but it's also the truth. But I want to hear from you guys on this. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think about this criminal probe? Does this involve Robert Morris? 
you know, again, for a church that, I got to say this, for a church that's now saying, oh, we're going to be so transparent with people, I mean, they're really being tight-lipped still, aren't they? They won't give you the names of the elders, although we could figure it out for ourselves. Talking about a criminal probe, but they're not going to tell you what it's in reference to. It just continues. But I want to get your thoughts. Leave them down below. Don't forget again as well, if you enjoy and appreciate my work, think about making a generous donation to support and fund Not By Sight News. You're helping out myself and my wife. You are literally helping us keep the lights on here and doing what we do. Remember, you have multiple ways of doing that. One, by visiting our GoFundMe. The GoFundMe link in the description of this video and all videos. Also, by becoming a monthly contributor, by joining our Patreon for as little as five bucks a month, patreon.com slash notbysightnews. That link also in the description. And finally, by just hitting the super thanks button on the YT video. Although I will remind you, if you choose that option, YT does take 30% of that for themselves. So if you want to make sure that we get the majority of your generous gift, our GoFundMe or Patreon will be your best options. We again thank all of you so much for your support. What I want to do right now, something I do on all these videos, let's end this video on hope. It's part of my ministry outreach. This is an altar call. I've been doing this on my videos since 2016. No matter what it is that I'm discussing in the church, exposing the corruption of the wolves that occupy its pulpits, we always want to make sure we give people the opportunity to receive Christ as Savior. That being said, anybody watching now, if you are somebody that has not yet received Jesus as Lord and Savior, you would like to do so. I want to lead you in a prayer to do that right now. This is a prayer you could do in your own words, but I will give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. The first thing you want to do right off the top, acknowledge you are a sinner. That is something that we all are. The good news is that God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world as he died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. That means to turn from sin, not just to say you're sorry and jump back to your old ways, but to actually turn from sin, which are those lifestyles, patterns, habits, behaviors, things in your life that go against the word of God. If you humbly go before the Lord, though, and ask him to forgive you, he'll wipe your sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. And I pray you make that decision today. Again, more info down below. Thank you all again so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.